Praise the name of Jesus today. King of kings, Lord of lords. We're in the midweek teach again. Time seems to be flying, doesn't it? Reading out of the New Testament. Today, Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to start in verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of your calling, or of the calling, with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. who is above all and through all and in you all. Well, of course, uh, first thing we do is go backwards and see who Paul's talking to here. And... um, He's not talking to the man in the street. It says in Ephesians 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful, in Christ Jesus, to the saints who are in Ephesus, not were and now are dead, but who are in Ephesus. He's writing to living people, not as the Roman Catholics would write to or talk about the dead saints. But you can't be a saint until you're dead. as they do. And as they canonise people's saints, where no man can make you a saint. No man or woman can make you a saint. We're made a saint through faith and obedience. No other way. I've titled our message today One, because there's a lot of ones here. One hope and one Lord and one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father. And many have run away with um, run away with what's written here. Included all kinds of doctrines and beliefs, even gods. But it's very clear one, one body, one spirit, one hope, one calling, one Lord, one faith. So if there's only one body, if it's, there's only one body, how can there be all these different uh, bodies? 
they can't be. Let me start today by saying that um, it's very helpful when I um, read an article in the Anglican Focus, the Anglican Focus magazine. Uh, that proved to me both the Anglicans and the Roman Catholics, uh, of course, and many others, chasing their tail for sure. And uh, it basically came back to a one world church. So, this is how they'll twist the scriptures. But this article was saying that everyone's joining in, becoming one. And uh, still hanging on to their uh, old beliefs and old gods. There are pagan traditions and cultures. They're all hanging on there. Hanging on to them and seemingly walking with Jesus. But that can't be because Scripture makes that clear, doesn't it? Scripture makes it clear that we're new creatures and uh, old things and all things have passed away. Everything has become new. So, one is a lonely number. It's the loneliest number you can ever do. Two can be as bad as one, but the loneliest number is the number one. And Let me say that uh, Australia is renowned for uh, religions of men, Baal. Baal worship and all different spirits and talking to the dead. But yet, Australia is called a Christian country. So, um, this writing in Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, talking about unity, and people just want to have unity so badly. They have gone beyond the word for sure, as scripture says not to. And when I read in the Anglican Focus, uh, number 360 it was, in the Anglican Focus, I thought it was appropriate that it was the uh, 360th um, article or well, magazine that they printed because 360 degrees makes a circle and that's all they're doing, chasing their tail. They, they're going around in circles. It was written in the 360th uh, Alien Focus um, magazine it was said that uh, a Christian bishop a Muslim imam a Jewish rabbi a Buddhist abbess and representatives 
from the Hindu, indigenous, Sufi and Baha communities all stepped onto the one stage to be welcomed uh, to the to, to um, the land of the ancestors by Aunty Velda Coolwell, who was the president of the Brisbane Council of Elders for the Aboriginals. Um, and Professor Sui Hin, director of the Multicultural Centre at Griffith University said, there is much common ground amongst the fights, plural, forward slash different religions, and it will prove to be a fruitful motivation for all faiths to join hands, hearts, and spirit in building a more peaceable, just, and sustainable world. Well, um, definitely man's doing this, isn't it? When it says here, uh, when Professor Sui Hin, the director of the Multicultural Centre at Griffith University, said there is much common ground. There is much common ground amongst the faiths plural, faiths, different religions. How can this be one faith? As we're reading here today in Ephesians 4, 4, Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, it says in here, one faith, one faith, there is one body, one spirit, a message today is called One. That there's only one Saviour. There's only one Father. There's only one Holy Ghost. There's only one way. There's only one doctrine. So how can there be, uh, how can there be many faiths and, and doctrines and spirits joining together to become one? When Amos 3.3 3 says that two cannot walk together unless they are in agreement. Now, if I was in agreement with the Baha'i, I can't be in agreement with Jesus too because he speaks contrary to the Baha'i. And Jesus is, himself is contrary to the Baha'i. <clears throat> if I'm in agreement with Mohammed, how can I be in agreement with Jesus? Because Jesus speaks different. Jesus' teaching is totally different to Mohammed. See? If I go along with Roman Catholicism, the teaching of Roman Catholicism and their Roman Catholic dogma is totally different to the teaching of Jesus. So, there's only one, isn't there, that singles everything out. That's 
that's um, very powerful, isn't it? The Lord has always cut to the chase in all the writings of the Holy Bible. There's no hum ha with Jesus, is there? But in this Anglican focus, um, this article that I was reading in the number 360, of the Anglican Focus magazine. It was all in recognition of common ground. Common ground. And I'm so desperate for unity and finding common ground. They will do practically do anything to have a pretentious uh, false unity. Whereas there cannot be true unity unless everyone has the same spirit. The spirit of the Christ. Spirit of God. Who is the, our only hope. The one hope. The hope of glory. Right? have the one Lord. But what we have here is we have different Lords. We have the Jewish Rabbi, we have the Muslim Imam, the so-called Christian Bishop. I gather that's Anglican or Roman Catholic. Then we have the indigenous and the Sufi uh, Buddhist, Abbas. Then we have Auntie Velda, Coolwell, uh, President of the Brisbane Council of Elders for the Aboriginals. And then uh, Professor Sui Hin, Director of Multiculturalism at the Griffith University. And there was all they were all in agreement that there's there's um, much common ground amongst faiths and different religions, and they reckon that it's, it's going to uh, Mr. Swehan said it's going to be fruitful for all faiths to join hands. It goes deeper and says, and join hearts. And, and spirit. But the Lord says, you become one. You join to yourself to a harlot and you become one with her. That's the Roman Catholic Church, is the harlot church, according to chapter 17 of the book of Revelation. You join yourself to a harlot. You join, uh, you become one with the harlot. But we're not of the one world church, are we? We're not of the one world church. And the reality is, while all the, religions of men and men and women trying to draw up their peace plans and um, manufacture some kind of unity. Uh, they don't understand that peace within begets peace, peace without. When you have ten people sitting at a table and every one of them follows the same Lord and every one of them uh, follows the same teaching and every one of them 
has the same spirit, namely uh, Jesus. <laughs> They're all following Jesus. They're all abiding by and teaching his doctrine, which is Father's doctrine. And they're all heading in the same direction. They're all on the narrow road. There's going to be peace because he's the Prince of Peace. There's never been anyone in the world known as the Prince of Peace, only Jesus. And there's no peace within without him as Lord. That's why the Lord said through Paul to the Corinthians, we, we, have, um, we have to be careful. We're not turned aside from the simplicity. And we also must test the spirit. We test the spirit, see where they're from. Because behind every teaching there's a spirit. And we see only recently people being beheaded in France. Now, what sort of spirit is behind that? regardless to the woman's um, belief, what sort of spirit's behind a belief in, in, in a person who'd walk up to a woman, an elderly woman, and cut her head off? What sort of spirit's that? Is that the, the Prince of Peace? Is that the spirit of the Lord Jesus? Can we have unity with that one? No, we can't. That would be impossible. Because righteousness has no fellowship with unrighteousness. I'm just going to go over to Corinthians and um, I'll read from 2 Corinthians I'll read from 2 Corinthians six eleven. 11 Corinthians we have spoken openly to you our heart is wide open you are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what, what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness. Paul goes on here in Corinthians, speaking to the Corinthians, and he's making it very clear. There can't be fellowship. We can't be all fellows in the one ship. And the message today is called One. When there's contraries. Okay? What fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with dark? What accord has Christ with Belial? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. 
as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, 2 Corinthians 6, 17, Therefore, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you. You shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Yeah, right tucked in the midst is come out from among them, not become one with them. These uh, uh, opposites, there's no common ground, is there? Righteousness and lawlessness, light and dark, the devil in Christ, there's no common ground there. The only common ground that uh, we all have, if it's any true common ground, is the doctrine of Jesus, the one doctrine. That's what brings us all together. In our little fellowship, uh, we have come from all walks of life and all kinds of backgrounds uh, of sin. And all have H-A-V-E, past tense, sin, but there's not one scripture saying that we all go on in sin. I don't know one scripture that says that when you come to Jesus, we continue on in sin happily all the way to heaven. I don't find that in the scriptures. I don't find St. Paul was a sinner. I find St. Paul reflecting on his past and then telling of his present position uh, of walking in the spirit and not being in debt to the flesh. I find Paul the Apostle saying that I can do all things, but in Romans chapter 7 he said I, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I didn't have any power to do it. But I find in uh, Romans 8 uh, the contrary in it uh, other letters he wrote, I can do all things. So if he can do all things through Christ, uh, and yet the one saved always says, say that, oh no, we're all bound by sin and sold under sin till the day we die, born again or not. There's not much use in being born again. Why would you be born again? If you're just going to plod along the same old road with the same uh, same old chains and same old setbacks, how can that be? The only recognition, the only common ground I recognise and have any conviction to recognise is the doctrine of Jesus. Now, when I come across people that don't have the doctrine of Jesus, you say, oh, well, who, who are you to say what's the doctrine of Jesus? Well, the Scriptures. <laughs> scripture confirms Scripture. And there's, there's so many scriptures that say that uh, without faith and obedience, we're just not going to be saved. Even 
Just for example, Matthew 10, 34, 39, makes it very clear, doesn't it? Hits the nail on the head. Matthew 10, I really love Matthew chapter 10 because it just gives you a thumbnail sketch of the walk of the disciple of Jesus. But there's that one line there in Matthew 10 that really stands out. You know, it's like, um, it says in verse 37, he, I'm going to paraphrase, he or she, don't want to miss the ladies out. Um, we don't want to discriminate against gender. He or she who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. See that? And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That just makes things so clear, doesn't it? Right? That the Lord Jesus makes it very clear. Who's worthy? Who? This is his doctrine. This is the one. The one... Uh, faith. See, when it says there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith. Hey? That's not talking about the substance of faith, that's talking about the doctrine. Let's talk about the doctrine. Uh, <clears throat> like it says, um, if we go over to to Jude, we'll have a look there. Because there's only one chapter in Jude. I'll read Jude 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once and for all delivered to the saints, contending for the faith, to fight and battle and argue and dispute for the faith and there's one faith hey there's only one doctrine and people say oh well this doctrine of Jesus you know how do you know which is the doctrine it's what Jesus said that his teaching is what he says my sheep know my voice. My sheep know what I say. Like the prophets of old, they were saying, peace, peace, peace. But then Jeremiah came along and said, look, I'm going to tell you, it's not peace, peace, peace. Right? The false prophets always cried peace, didn't they? That's why they didn't listen to Jeremiah for 40 years. <laughs> hey? When we get the red writing and, and we get the letters of Paul, hey? we, um, we 
come to see the doctor, don't we? In Jeremiah 3.15, the Lord promised to give shepherds who would teach his people understanding and knowledge. Right? Give them understanding and knowledge. But uh, we remember the the uh, falsehood of Hananiah. Eh? He took the 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 yoke off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. Let me read you something out of Jeremiah 28. I'm going to go to Jeremiah 28. In verse 8. The prophets who have been before me and before you of all prophesied against many countries and great kingdoms of war and disaster and pestilence. As for the prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet comes to pass, the prophet will be known as one whom the Lord has truly sent. And then that was when Hananiah, the prophet, took the yoke off the prophet's Jeremiah's neck and broken. And um, it goes on to say that uh, Jeremiah said in verse 13, Jeremiah 28, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, You have broken the yokes of wood, but you have made in their place yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. I have given him the beast of the field also. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah, Said to Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you make this people trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cast you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die, because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year, in the seventh month. You see that? Totally two different teachings. And what happens when we cross over the teaching? You've got Hen and I saying one thing, Jeremiah saying another. And when we come against the true prophet and we try to change things, we only make it worse. We're best just to receive the words of the prophet. Uh, let me reference Acts 3.23. It says if we don't receive the great prophet, we'll be utterly destroyed. But this cry for peace, peace, peace. The true follower of Jesus doesn't have a cry for peace, peace, peace and unity, unity, unity. The true prophet's cry is repent. And turn from your sin. The Lord will forgive you and he'll make all things new. Repent. It's not peace, peace, peace. That's a false proclaimer. Peace, peace, peace. And then cometh sudden destruction. 
There's only one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As Jesus said, I'm going home to Father, I send another. He's the paraclete. He's the Holy Ghost. Hey? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We got it all. And they like to think that, oh, you know, they're, they're manifestations of the one. No, they're persons. Because Jesus was on earth and he, the disciples said, how do we pray? And he said, our Father who art in heaven, our Father. So he had a Father. And, and then the martyr Stephen, he looked up and seen Jesus at Father's right hand, at God's right hand. And there's only one Father, not Jesus. <laughs> Jesus isn't Father, Jesus is Jesus. As long as we get that straight, we don't have that right, how can anything else be right? You see, only religious people look for common ground because they have all these different arguments. Hey? They're looking for common ground. But you know a true saint, they don't look for common ground. They find it. It's just a natural thing in the spirit as it is in the natural. It just happens because the people that meet up have the same doctrine and there's only one. There's only one faith and there's only one baptism. If we're talking about common ground and oh, I'm like you and you're like me, are you baptised into the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus? Huh? That's the question. Have you been baptised into the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus? Is your hope Jesus, the anchor of the soul? Is your call to holiness or sin? God never called us to uncleanness. He called us to holiness, which is walking in the truth. Walking in lies is, is uncleanness. There's nothing more unclean than a lie. <laughs> Let me say that again. There's nothing more unclean than a lie. There's nothing more unclean than the devil. <coughs> He's the liar, father of every lie. Hey? We have Professor Sui Hin in this article of Common Ground Ecumenical, Ecumenicalism, isn't it? Common Ground amongst the faiths, amongst all the different teachings and different religions. How can you have common ground there? That would be pretentious, wouldn't it? We gotta have we gotta make sure our love is without hypocrisy. What sort of fruit you tell me what sort of fruit could come out of uh, fellowshipping with people who have other gods? And masters, I'll tell you what sort of fruit. It'd be bad fruit. It'd be confusion. The Lord said that the tree produces good fruit or bad fruit. There's no, no Mister in between. 
It's either a new garment or an old garment. It's either light or it's darkness. It's either true or it's false. Oh, but who are you to say that it's uh, that that's true and that and, and that's false? I'm not saying. I, I'm rolling everything onto Jesus. Everything. I don't care if I put my hand on someone and they got one arm and they grow an arm. I roll it onto Jesus. If I somehow out of nowhere. Uh, draw a crowd of 10 million people at one meeting. I roll it onto Jesus. It's not, it's not mine. It's not me. Huh? If I get slaughtered for Jesus, I roll it onto Jesus. <laughs> the glory belongs to Jesus, doesn't it? The glory belongs to Jesus. The glory belongs to the King, the King of the Jews who hung on the tree. The glory belongs to Him. Peace within begets peace without. And it doesn't matter how uh, troublesome it is all around. When we have the Prince of Peace within, it's all good. Because he steers us beside the still waters. Tranquility in Christ. Now there was another uh, at this conference where everyone's getting conned. The Common Ground Great South Land Conference <laughs> of religious people, all these different spirits and worshippers of the dead. Um, her name was Margaret Nalon. She was from the Commission for Ecumeni Ecumenism and Interreligious Relations. And she said that all faith traditions have something positive and rich to offer Queensland. Boy, oh boy. Huh? All faith traditions have something positive. See the language? Positive. Negative. That's not the oracles of God. The Lord doesn't speak in that language. The Lord speaks as the oracles of God. Jesus' doctrine and faith and teaching was Father's. That's what he said. He said, I got it from Father. He said nothing unless he heard from Father. He did not himself. As the one that heretics say, you know, Jesus changes into Father in the telephone box. No, he doesn't change. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. And Father is Father. Hey? Father sent his son, John 3.16. God so loved the world, he gave his, his son. He didn't give himself. He gave his son to be the theme. Hey? Jesus is the theme. It's all about Jesus. It's all Jesus. That's the way Father designed it. No. That's the way Father designed it. That's the way of the script for the for this uh, movie. I look at the Bible as a movie, you know. All the different things 
I look at it as a serial. Sometimes it's a drama serial, isn't it? It's a drama show, right? <laughs> Margaret. Margaret Nalon from the Commission of Ecumenism and Interreligious Relations. Something positive, see? You're not looking for something positive when you have Jesus because you have Jesus indwelling. Okay? So um, there must be that one faith that's tucked in the middle, isn't it? That's just sitting there in the middle of Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. Or in, and especially uh, Ephesians 4, 4 to 6. It's tucked away there in the middle. Uh, and if we look at Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, it, it starts off with I, identifying Paul and, and his position in the spirit. He was a prisoner. Ephesians 4, 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. The prisoner of the Lord. Beseech you to walk worthy. I didn't know you had to walk worthy. Of the calling with which you were called. I didn't know you had to walk worthy. Walk worthy. I thought it was just say a prayer, sit in a chair and go to heaven. Once saved, always saved. Salvation by election. Hey? Huh? Spurgeonism. God's going to get you there. Now you got to walk worthy. God's not going to get you there. As Spurgeon says. Oh, God's going to carry that. So he's got a, a million sheep on his back. Carrying them. What a load of hogwash. That doesn't add up. That just doesn't. Uh, mix it doesn't gel with script. It's just not Christos kosher, is it? I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling. Going into verse two, he says, with all lowliness, gentleness long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The unity, the unity of many spirits. No, of the Spirit. How can you keep the unity of the Spirit, of the Holy Ghost? How can that be? Would you not be grieving the Holy Spirit? Wouldn't you be grieving the Holy Spirit if you had unity with who the Lord said not to have unity? Wouldn't that grieve the Spirit? What Fellowship, what unity has righteousness with unrighteousness, godliness with ungodliness, truth with lies, Belial with, with Christ. What, where's, the, where's the unity? Where's the unity of the Spirit there? Endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. the unity of the Holy Spirit that cannot be kept without the doctrine of Jesus and obeying the doctrine of Jesus. Because the Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. So we could read that 
as saying in verse 3, Ephesians 4 verse 3, endeavouring to keep the doctrine of the Christ and the spirit behind the doctrine of the Christ is Holy Spirit because they're Holy Scriptures. They're Scriptures and words of truth and the Spirit of God the Holy Ghost will back nothing else, will stand with nothing else except the truth. Because he guides you into all truth. He guides you in the scriptures. Hey? We hear that in the scriptures at the fire of the Holy Ghost and the hearts of the disciples burnt within them as he unraveled and expounded on the scriptures their hearts burned within them the word of God in the in the fire of God, the, the doctrine of Christ and the Holy Spirit, working hand in hand at every turn. Amen. The word is a fire and a hammer. And we can't say that with the teachings of other religions. There's no need for this big positive, this new age jargon. It's either faith or fear, light or dark. And then we, of course, in this Anglican focus, number 360, where they're chasing their tail, there was a, a, a bit written there about interfaith youth at Griffith University, explored and entered into the different types of meditation. Interfaith youth. So he had all these young people at the university indulging in all kinds of uh, spirits and meditation connecting up with all kinds of religions like Buddhist, Hindu, and sitting in the middle, so-called Christian, clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Buddhist on the left, Hindu on the right, and Christian in the middle, and they're mixing it all up. It's a mixed bag, isn't it? Hey? It's no longer the original Fredo Frog show bag. It's got, it's got a mix. It's got a bit of licorice all sort. It's got a bit of um, musk, musk stick in there. It's got a bit of fizzy sherbet and... It's got a couple of um, uh, comics in there that aren't usually there, even though it's a Fred O. Frog show bag, but inside it's a mixed bag. It's a mess. It's not true to the name of the show bag, is it? But the show must go on, they say, and God will allow it to the very end. But the highlight of the of the whole program for the youth, the highlight uh, was food for the belly. Food for their belly. They had all the different foods there. They were tucking into. Okay? The way to a man's heart is his belly. Gee, I feel sorry for that one, if that's the case. 
that want to be taken by the snare of the devil. The way to my heart is the doctrine of Jesus. Someone speaks the doctrine of Jesus to me, unadulterated. I want to hug that one. I want to give to that one. I want to share with that one. I want to listen to that one. I want to be with that one. I want to be where love is. I want you to show me. I want to know Christ's way. If you want to be where love is, you you stay in the word because that's where the love is. It's in the truth, the love of the truth. Then you'll know what love is. And it'll be nothing what you thought it was. Huh? So the interfaith youth, interfaith youth, oh, just just the wording's enough for me, it's scary, isn't it? Buddhist, Christian and Hindu. So then you're going to know more about each other so you don't offend each other. And then you'll find out what offends them and then you won't say anything. But you know the preaching of the cross is just one big offence to sinful people. And it's never going to change. That's the way it is. And the preaching of the cross is foolishness to all who are hell-bound. That's the power of God unto salvation for those who dare believe. So the the highlight of the program for the youth at the Griffith University was foods for the belly and visits to all the different religious temples and mosques. And even the Muslim people, they were allowing all visitors to stay and observe how they pray. Watch, watch us pray. You know, better than the hypocrites of old and the Pharisees. They like to stand and everyone watch them pray. Hey? But the Lord said to go into your closet. You, they're allowing everyone to stay and observe their prayer manners. Well, that's no manners at all according to Jesus because he said go into your closet. Keep it between us. It's got nothing to do with anyone else. Amen. Prayer is like marriage. It's got nothing to do with anyone else. <laughs> Keep your big nose out of it. Hey? Keep your big nose out of other people's marriages. Digging around there. Go and do something constructive. Or, or go and deconstruct and pull down and destroy false doctrine somewhere. Hallelujah. When you pray, you go into your closet and make a big show about it. Oh, look at me. Oh, I'm rotundering the rotunda. <laughs> I'm calling down a fire. The only time I read about all the, uh, the disciples gathering together was in the upper room waiting for the Holy Ghost. Huh? They were in the upper room. And the Holy Ghost came. They were tarrying. In the, in the Book of Acts, wasn't it? But we, it sort of drifted away from that concept, haven't we? And all the churches of the world have made all sorts of things. They've invented all kinds of things. Right? I'm going to go over to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. We're doing the ones again. It's a real one day, isn't it? One morning. 
And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat under each of them. I should say one sat upon each of them. One person sitting under each flame. Or, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see that? They were sitting there in one accord, all together, and then bang, the Holy Ghost came. Glory to the Lamb. Hey? But here we are, we, they, they got everyone watching on. Such a sacred thing is prayer, isn't it? Such a, such a personal thing. And, and, you know, we can, we, we, I don't find anything wrong with gathering together and, and praying together and praising the Lord together and reading the Word together and relishing in it. I don't find any problem with that. But I just don't understand this looking on. What would you be looking on? What's that about? And see if, if you want to do it. See if you want to do it that way, you want to do it their way, or you might, might want to do it the Hindu way. What, do you, what would you like? Would you like um, any sauce with those fries or gravy? Or That's the way they treat it. <laughs> it's just not like that, is it? Just not like that. So the visits to the mosque and uh, then there was Rosemary Morell of the um, parish of Aspley, Albany Creek. And she said the whole thing was fun. The ecumenical, the Common Ground Conference. She said it was all fun. It was interesting and educational. Rosemary reckons that um, we should encourage others to make the most of interfaith religious dialogue. We all should be involved. After all, God made and loves all of us. See, and let me say that this is only a cutting from the article of the recognition of common ground. Um, it's only a precious. We all should be involved in ecumenical, in, in, in finding common ground. After all, God made and loves all of us. But John 14, 21 to 24 doesn't say that, does it? I do believe God made everyone and everything, every flea and every flower, everything, seen and unseen. I do believe that. But I don't believe that he loves all as they say, because it says that Father only loves those who do what Jesus says. If you go to John 14, 21, 24. There, my brother, sister, mother, also, in Luke 8, 21, hear the, what, the word of God and do it. Yeah. It's clear to see the theme isn't it? The theme and the seeds being planted in people's minds in this article of millions, millions of Anglicans are receiving this worldwide. Um, old Twiggy Forrest, he's an Anglican. Sounds, it reads like his sort of stuff. And there's money too. Money in ecumenicalism. Ecumenism. In common ground there's a, there's a lot of money. Hey? 
I'm like you. We're the same. No, we're not. <laughs> no. You can't be of the world then of God. Uh, there's only one faith. Hey? There's only one door of faith. And the Lord Jesus opened up the door of faith. And it wasn't on the wide road either. He done that with his blood, his death, burial, and resurrection. Um, to go just over quickly to John, John ten. John ten. And I'll read from uh, I'm going to read from uh, John ten and verse nine. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have it more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he who is a hireling and not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling. He doesn't care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my sheep. Hey? What do you think of that? John 10, 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. So it's by Jesus, isn't it? It's by Jesus. It's not by high. It's by Jesus. And we'll go in, out, and find pasture. See? But so how are these Muslims entering into prayer when they said, oh, watch me. Look at me, Mum. I'm praying. How are they entering in? In the name of Jesus? Huh? They're saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Father, I come in the name of Jesus, my advocate. I come in the name of Jesus my Redeemer and Saviour. Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for Holy Spirit. I thank you for the angels. I thank you, Lord, that vengeance is yours and I don't have to take vengeance no matter how badly and wicked uh, people perform against me because you will take care of them and when you take care of them, they're going <laughs> to know about it, I tell you. Hey? You know what I see when I, I look at and read the words multi faith? Multi faith conferences. When I see that, I straight away think of stubborn, headstrong, unteachable, unwilling people. They're not willing to believe and receive and accept and follow. The great I am. It's simple as that. They're just not going to submit. They're going to do their thing and they're going to mix in a little bit along the way. And I, okay, we'll give Jesus a throw and he can be a master and he can even be a good teacher or maybe a prophet. The Muslims allowed Jesus to be a prophet. As I say to Muslims all the time when they talk to me, they say, who was Jesus? And I said, well, according to the Quran, isn't he a prophet? And doesn't the prophet say that... Isn't it said that you've got to do what the prophets say? Well, do you do what Jesus says? <laughs> they don't know what to say. 
Oh yeah, well Jesus is a prophet. Yeah. A prophet. No, he's the great prophet. And Jesus would judge Muhammad. And Jesus would judge every man and woman that ever drew breath. And he's going to judge with righteousness and holiness and without partiality. So, um, it's very clear. John fourteen six. I am the way, the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. No one. Except we go to Jesus first. And then, of course, you've got 2 John 9 to 11, haven't you? It says, anyone comes with any other doctrine, if anyone comes to you with any other faith, so how can you have interfaith, inter-doctrine, inter inter inter-beliefs? How can that be? No, there's only one faith. There's only one One is the loneliest number you can ever do. Two can be as bad as one, but the loneliest number is the number one. Ho, ho, ho. Now, no is the saddest experience you'll ever know. Yes, it's the saddest experience you'll ever know. I'm going to finish by saying this. There is one body, there's only one church. One, not many. One church, one body, one Holy Ghost, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope, the anchor of the soul, Jesus, of your calling, one Lord, come on, one faith, one doctrine, one baptism, one God, one Father of all who is above all and through you all and in you all. Speaking to saints, remember. Not every Freddie in town speaking to saints at a, at a feast. Speaking to saints. To the saints who are in a feast and faithful. You don't, it's not good enough just to be a saint. You've got to be and faithful in Christ Jesus. And grace to you and peace from God, listen, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. How can there, how can this, this oneness heresy, oneness garbage be valid? When Ephesians chapter 1 verse 2 says very clearly, Okay. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you think of that? Eh? I give you all the glory, Jesus. Remember, one, there's only one way that leadeth to eternal life. It's the narrow road. And it's not easy and sleazy. It's difficult. But you have the Holy Spirit, you can do it. Enjoy your day, dear listener. Amen.